All right. Uh, first topic this morning, tracer namespaces. Uh, so my name is uh, Mathieu Desnoyers. I am CEO at uh, Efficius. Uh, I uh, did, uh, created the, the content of this talk with uh, Michael Janson, who is uh, with me here. So let's, uh, let's state the problem and discuss our goals. So we want to allow tracing of kernel and user space and for uh, instrumentation to be av available and consumed from containers. So I'll skip ahead right now, right away to the last point. So, I mean, the easy way to see it is I'd like to do a, a trace that is fast, that can be used from containers. Uh, but in order to be fast, we want to use kernel buffers for tracing. Uh, and S-Trace is one of the use cases, but I want the information not to come only from system call instrumentation, but also from new probes, from user events, so that includes user space ins instrumentation. So we want to uh, allow the tenants to have the ability to observe their own user space instrumentation and kernel syscalls, uh, that, the ones that are related to their own activity. So, of course, you don't want to leak information uh, across different tenants that have not, nothing to do what, uh, with one another. So it's only things like system call tracing for the threads belonging to that tenant that you want to trace. Um, so eventually delegated NICs as well, block IO devices might be uh, nice to have. Uh, and that should be hierarchical. So as you have a hierarchy of containers uh, or namespace, you'd want to have a, 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 a parent namespace being able to trace what everything that is happening happening underneath. So it's not a flat model. It's really something that should be able to be done uh, hierarchically. Um, right. So one approach and one way to do it, which might not be the most efficient, but could be convenient and a good first start. So uh, we could have filtering on a per namespace basis. So uh, would allow the, the, the internal tracers to do filtering by namespace, by tracer namespace, including children namespaces. And by the way, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm talking about a tracer namespace as if it was a thing, but today it does not exist. And I mean, that's a bit the goal of my talk. I mean, does it make sense as a context? Uh, well, and it's more a discussion, right? And please, uh, if you have any questions during the presentation, please, uh, please ask. So, uh, so we could do filtering. So uh, uh, that includes children namespaces for all those various instrumentation sources that I previously discussed. Uh, and the filtering by namespace, I mean, it's a comparison. I mean, uh, we need to compare the, when an event is hit, we need to compare the, the current namespace with all the, um, sorry, so, so we want to fill to, in the filter, we want to accept the specific tracer namespace. So when we take that information that's associated with a rank buffer, let's say, and we compare it with the, when the event happened with the current namespace, then we need a comparison that takes into account the entire hierarchy. So it needs to check whether what we are looking for matches anything from the hierarchy. So, yeah. So another way to see the problem, which might be more efficient. So, so the, the, the one problem I see with that approach is that if we have large systems with many smaller buffers in different subcontainers, I mean, when an event is hit, we'll end up with a huge link list that we have to go and we'll fail, 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 match, fail, 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 fail. So that's tons of comparisons and that's very likely inefficient. And, and each of those comparisons will have to walk up a hierarchy as well. So, I mean, that's, yeah, that's a lot of things to do. Another way to see it is uh, a, seeing it as a dispatch. So when the, is, the event happens, so it, so of course, so the event is emitted from a tracer namespace. So it may have to go, let's say, so let's say we associate a ring buffer with a tracer namespace. So the event would check, okay, do I have to be traced to, to save a copy in my own buffer? And then it just have to go up and up and up to the root 
because those are the only buffers that might be interested in seeing this event. I mean, all the buffers that are in tracer namespaces that do not belong to the uh, upward hierarchy, we don't care. So, so, so that doing that as a dispatch like this might be a good way to to do it, but that would involve somehow at the design level that we can associate the per namespace ring buffers with the namespace. I mean, those should not be different uh, uh, unrelated concepts. I mean, the, the the notion of being able to have a ring buffer associated with a tracer namespace comes into play. So then we can serialize a copy of the event records into each ring buffer that are subscribed to this event. Um, so only the current and parent namespaces may be possibly interested in the event. So it eliminates useless iteration on all the system's ring buffers and useless filtering comparisons. And it's only possible if we attach ring buffers to the tracer namespace they belong to. So Matthew, yeah, interrupt and say this problem. Do you have microphone? Does it work? It, work. Uh, it needs to be turned on. Sorry, can we have microphones for the, the audience? Test? Yeah, ah, it's working now. You. Okay, so this problem you have with what you're calling tracer namespaces is identical to exactly the same problem that uh, Stefan Berger is currently having with the IMA namespaces. Uh, so wh which one? Sorry? The IMA namespace. It has a set of hierarchical rules that may or may not apply in each namespace, and it has to do all of this upward stuff. I'm not saying you're doing it wrongly, but I am saying that can we have just one solution to this? So if we, if he works out an efficient solution, you should use it, or if you can work out an efficient solution, just mm -hmm. make sure he uses it. The other observation is that with IMA, we eventually settled on the fact that because it works in this hierarchical way, that's basically this, exactly the same way as the user namespace works. So there is no real separate IMA namespace. We're just going to hang off the user namespace, and you should probably consider doing the same thing as well. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So, uh, my, my suggestion basically was back in the days for the uh, for the IMA namespace is to stash a point uh, to the IMA namespace, for example, and struct user namespace, similar for bin format mounts, but that's a separate uh, separate topic. So his point being that you, if you could hang it off directly off of user namespace instead of introducing a new namespace type, that might be worth it. Okay. Sorry, okay. you wanted to say something. Yeah, I just want to say two things. So the first thing, so first of all, I would love to be able to use BPF trace inside a container. That would be something that I would love to be able to do. Uh, with that being said, um, there there are two things. So one, the one thing is that this is a current practical problem, which is that the BPF syscall is completely blocked. In the, the what's the BPF syscall? BPF, BPF is yep. completely blocked inside containers, and there are there are many things. That, Second syscall interception, we actually can use BPF in control. Uh, okay, ignore him. Yeah, but you, yeah. <laughs> ignore what you just said. Uh, no, you can do it, okay, but uh, in like other containers, you can't, like in drug containers or whatever, you can't um, use BPF. Uh, that sign, which is theoretically a solvable problem if we solve the whole seccomp thing. Um, if we do manage to solve that, uh, there's also the secondary problem of that um, uh, presumably you can run BPF inside a container. Can you run BPF inside a container normally? I'm asking because you, because basically this is this is the whole um, side channel issue with like if you can insert eBPF and then it has access to a map and yada yada. yada. Usually you can create uh, BPF programs. Um, you you might sometimes be able to load them, but you cannot attach them. And yeah. um, that would require cap uh, BPF or. Right. And, and I, it be that doesn't work, uh, as far as I understand. So I think uh, I, I, like uh, half years ago, I was talking about a similar topic from the BPF side. I got a strong neck from almost everyone. And, but this is good. And the BPF side, we're doing this. And for this one, this is an interesting idea, like uh, focus on the ring buffer. But I guess that will not apply, uh, not uh, work on BPF because BPF, you don't have the dedicated ring buffer. You, Trigger directly from the event side. But for, for BPF, what maybe could be done is whatever runtime context you have could be per container. So you don't leak information between containers or something. What I call a ring buffer could be generalized to some. Right. What is your execution context in yeah. BPF? I, I was saying that this is, I guess, the, uh, uh, sorry, to be fair, I'm not against this. I uh, And I would love to be able to have this. The thing I'm going to say is that I suspect that the uh, side channel issue is probably going to be the main co concern with, with having BPF-based things. Because even, even if it was a separate context, I mean, 
I don't mean like it's you're running code, uh, code in kernel space, and then that has access to whatever cache that is, and yada yada, yada and then yeah. I, mean, I mean I don't know all of that. That's but probably a whole other discussion right, yeah, yeah, that yeah. we don't have to the time to take in right, yeah, twenty five minutes. But yeah, I mean let's keep that keep in going, mind. Sir. Let's keep going. Uh, so in terms of resource control, what's not unclear to me? So let's say you have this. So however it's done, right? This concept of tracer namespace. Uh, and you have a ring buffer associated with it, uh, how do you uh, specify the resource control? Because part of ring buffer is allocating memory. So, I mean, C groups are pretty good at, con as, uh, uh, at controlling, uh, allowing a user to delegate resources. And uh, part of it, uh, part of my question is how do we tie those two together? I mean, having the ring buffer associated with the namespace and, uh, and having a C group to control delegation of those resources. Oh yes, this subcontainer can allocate ring buffers or not, or that many, that much memory for ring buffers, things like that. So that, that's really more an open question to you guys. I mean, yeah, I mean, my guess would be, uh, really depends on when this ring buffer will be allocated, right? If it be allocated when you make the namespace, then it would then end up being associated, uh, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, okay. Currently, when we make containers is that they're created in, you haven't even joined the C group yet, I don't think, when we make the namespaces, at least in run C. And so, yeah, you would not, yeah. And it would be, it would be associated with the wrong thing, yeah. Yeah, I mean, normally with, with we kind of the default behavior we've got from almost everything is you pretty much get everything and you use C groups to restrict. Whereas in this case, you don't want to do that because the everything would be Point infinite therapy. ring buffer right yeah um <laughs> so that's a bit more problematic and that's not something that i think we've got much precedent for in c groups right now um for most of that kind of thing the precedent we've got for right now is like a bunch of random syscalls which is not or maybe we could allow a default i mean mm -hmm. when you create the, the the tracer namespace maybe it could have a default tiny ring buffer that the I mean, problem you have is that users can create an infinite amount of user namespaces so then you want to reserve zero pretty much yeah and so basically give you hierarchical limits that could work then you would need an entry under proxys user slash tracer ring buff size or whatever it's a way to hierarchically uh, restrict uh, resources by by user. It is right. Yeah. 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 Which... yeah it is. It is six. Okay. Uh, question over there. No. Oh. Uh, yeah, there, uh, this charging uh, memory control could be used there, but there is uh, one. Uh, related issue uh, with this objects that uh, are not bound to a lifetime of a process. So actually to whom should they be charged, whether it's the process that created them or the C group where the process was. Uh, currently, we, we have been discussing this about, this about some uh, mem memory controller related objects that also uh, exceed the lifetime of the process. So there's easier, we can just charge them to the parent memory C group. But here, if you have different hierarchy, for the tracers, so we would have to somehow create an association between the tracer, tracer interface, and a particle memory C group. So it depends on, yeah, there's a problem with the, these eternal objects. I mean, the thing I would ask you is that uh, uh, would, I don't actually know about how ring buffers and tracing work. Is that something that is expandable by uh, user space factory? You, would, you could have like a zero sized one that would be expanded? Uh, or is it has to be fixed from the beginning? Because depends on the tracer technology. I mean, I, I won't go into this, this level of detail right, right now. I, I know that the, the F-Trace ring buffer can balloon okay. in terms of size. LTTNG cannot, so it's okay. fixed when it's configured. Okay. That's it, but I mean, yeah. Because, because if it can expand, then, uh, okay, if it can expand, then you could charge whatever, whatever uh, housekeeping is being done for this would have to be charged to something which is not in the C group, which is going to be a problem. But the bit where you expand it, that would be, you could, Alec, you could associate it, you could charge it with the process that was that triggered the expansion. Um, However, but, I mean, in the common use case, you might not care about keeping the old events. You might just throw away the old buffers and allocate new ones. And I mean, that should be 
good enough for most use cases, which will be to set the size when you create the container. Right, right. But the issue is that if you're setting the size when you create the container, there is not a C group yet for it, is the problem. At, at least in run C, we, we create the C groups later. Uh, sorry, and actually you have to because um, you have to create the C group after you create uh, the C group namespace. Uh, no, sorry, one, wrong way around. One thing I've seen for timer namespace, uh, time namespace and things like that, so they have this notion of the name, some value for child in the parent, which is available there, so that whenever you create children, that value gets used. So maybe that could be a way to do it. So in the parent, you set that for the for child, so the kind of buffer size for child, and then you create the, the child. All right, so just repeating a question that was showing up in the chat, it's um, they're asking what the actual requirement and use case is for this thing. Uh, use a tracer inside one container or run tracer uh, to trace only selected tasks inside of a container. So my use case is to trace a container, but also to be able to create a sub-process hierarchy within a container and trace just that sub-process hierarchy. So without like changing PID namespace or things like that. So I want to be in the same namespace as the rest, but just being traced as a subgroup. That's also part of my requirement. Microphone. And this is like, oh, sorry. Uh, this is also, I mean, you could set up a container that would allow you to do this, but like, it depends if you're talking about this is something you want to be able to do in like Kubernetes spawned on AWS or something like that. Uh, in that case, you would be looking at, I mean, the default setup is that half of that stuff is blocked. Like, you can't unshare a new namespace. Uh, I mean, you don't even have Capsis admin, so you could unshare a namespace even if, even if there wasn't a second filter for it, but there's also a second filter to block you from doing unshare at all. And again, <laughs> these are all things that I would love to have, <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you'd be able to get this stuff to work with like a regular container. You know, I'd like it. Yeah, it depends on the container workload. For us, it wouldn't be a problem because we usually don't uh, usually have deny list filters where we just deny specific things um, because we run full system containers. I mean, you know, Stefan, you know, the, the Lexi stuff, but for these application containers, a lot of them are way more restricted. So using Tracing within them will be more complicated. Yes, but, but I mean, that, that's a policy discussion. Yeah. I, I want to discuss the mechanisms. Yeah, yeah. And then if we get the right mechanisms and it has enough value, people will be able to make the right policy decision to maybe enable some of this. Yeah. So, yeah. I have four minutes to finish my content. Let's move on. Thank you. Uh, so there's been an RFC uh, patch set for user event. Steven, you have to pay attention now. Uh, so for TraceFS from Bo Belgrave, Microsoft, where he wants to, so, so, so I told him that for the user events, I wanted to see how it would fit with name, with namespaces and containers. And in an RFC patch that he proposed a notion, adding a notion of namespace, quote unquote, within TraceFS to kind of, and by using make there, you could create a namespace, but I kind of see that it goes against the the old notion of namespaces and i mean i'd really like to rather have to have something uh, that piggybacks either on an existing namespace or a new one that we can use with clone set an s on share uh and maybe use cgroup to to de delegate the buffer size but what what do you guys think about that i think uh so the the make the thing thing i don't really like and i don't know if we I think we should avoid uh, having to create a whole new namespace type just for tracing because what we really it, it seems like all of the permission checking and that you that you want uh, you get by hooking yourself onto the user namespace itself because it gives you hierarchical permission checking it gives you all the capabilities and so on it's nicely encapsulated and it seems like exactly what what you want yeah. having a new namespace type introduces a lot of new complexity that you need to account for and you count is associated with user yeah. namespace. So, well. so just to clarify, so you could create a user namespace with exactly the same mapping as yeah, was, the parent, right? right I was, I was going to say, it, nothing, the user namespace doesn't require you to have a subset of your IDs and GIDs. You can create a user namespace and promptly write the entire host map if you want, which effectively keeps it privileged if you want to. Yep. There's nothing preventing you from doing that. You do need to set it up that way, but it's nothing preventing you from doing that. 
now, it's kind of identity matrix. Yeah. Now, I think one of the reasons why we did the make DR thing was the fact that I believe we wanted certain events available when not available, the visible or something like that. Wasn't that part of the case because, or was it because if TraceFS gives you the events that you can enable or disable, I thought the namespace was going to be able to say, okay, these are visible events that they have. That, wasn't that part of the issue? So you're not going to get all, you may not get all events. Isn't that brought up? Okay, so so that would be an additional requirement on, okay. So being able to select well, which events would be Well, basically, we had events that visible. we didn't want shared in a namespace. Sorry, I, I heard a why over there. That's why I jumped in. I answered answer that. One, Matthew, I, I didn't. Yes. So the additional requirement for the user events would be that in a, so some specific events coming from that container would be an, visible and could be enabled yeah. from within I, that I think specific that's what it was. I think maybe that's what it was. The fact that you had a user events from the one. So basically the outside world could see all events, but each container sees only their events. Mm. So yes, but, but then, I mean, one thing you could do is to have a sys kernel tracing current namespace notion. So there you see your own events and they get given to you by the kernel. But I mean, you're not creating the namespaces right. through but that. They think the way it was was the fact. I think it was to simplify the notion of that. I mean, that means you have to hook in. That way, if you made it from the like, the make dr would not be done. Would be done outside containers. You do. That's why they said this is what's visible in the permissions. That was. I think that was the reason rationale for the make dir was to have it be able to. And also was I think it was another part of it was it made it easier. I, here's another thing. I'm trying to come back because this is months ago that we did this conversation. I believe another issue was the fact that we really wanted the host to be easily to identify this, these events go to this container, these events go to this container, this events go to this container. I'm not so sure, I'm not familiar, so much familiar with the namespace uh, right, so, API for that. So independent of that uh, problem, which we might still solve, even if we hook it to the, to the user namespace, um, what's the status of this user events thing? So, because last time I checked, uh, it went in, but it will not be hooked up with EBC. They have a thing patch that is actually, based, this is one of those things where I got pushed off because of plumbers and everything else, not be able to review the patch set, but I've not seen, Matthew, have you looked at them, right? The I looked at, looked at the and patch set. Was there any issues that you received with them going? To Missing the trace point. What? Because lib trace point that we want to right. have in user space right. to allow instrumentation of user space to go to kernel tracers yes. and user space tracer. Until we have that, we have kind of really no idea whether the ABI choice are the right ones because right. It, they may completely have to change right. or have a huge adaptation layer. And I don't want that. And, and I gave my promise that because right now, like I said, I have like maybe 10, 15% of my time for upstream work. And right now, number one, on that is the user, my user events is number yeah. one. I'm working so, on that before I do anything else. So the thing currently is that um, uh, they want to make use of this um, user event stuff and they would like to have it available. Um, but currently we face the problem that uh, we, the EBPF guys categorically say, we, we don't want this. Uh, this will never be enabled with uh, EB, with EBPF, and for all we care, it could be out of the kernel. Uh, at the same time, the ABI isn't really clear, so we we need a direction with this yes. because otherwise, you know, we get pushed by um, requirements. Yes, uh, but one of the issue there, I speak personally there. Microsoft is expecting us to provide feedback on a specific timeline without any uh, considerations about. Oh, yeah, yeah. Us not being Microsoft. Yes. Yeah, so, so we I, should get to an agreement so that I can prioritize this work because I do that in my spare time and I don't have much. Yeah. yeah. Understandable. Uh, I think we're out of. Sorry. We, we do sorry. I, I'm not. I'm not. You can see. So I, I have more concern with like eventually this will have like uh, one user will generate enough noise for others. And uh, like one example would be like uh, the K-prop. You say we got a user, you can generate a K-prop or like uh, you give the permission to the user to generate the K-prop. Technically, you can generate the K-prop for like all the functions. 
No, oh, so okay, you mean hooking trick cape probes and then saving that information into per namespace ring buffers? Is that uh, what you mean? It's not about saving the information because the filter will get that. You won't get any security problem, but like the the performance hit with like tracing a, like a very hot uh, kernel functions, because you're going to hit that kernel function whether you are in the namespace or not. Uh, my goal there was not to um, to enable K probes at all for that. I mean, that was U probes uh, as well as user events and system call tracing. But the syscall tracing might have some performance over it. But yeah, I think we're out of time. Yeah. yeah. We, we can discuss later. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to have to, to wrap up and switch to the next presenter. Um, I think this was a very good and useful discussion. So thanks a lot for that.